Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, recently, I had to advise uh, some of my doctors um, when they were escalating oxygen therapy in uh, COVID patients, when they found it difficult to manage the saturation with uh, high flow nasal cannula, I asked them to um, change over to non rebreather mask oxygen after analyzing the patient's breathing pattern, and then uh, instantly fix the problem of uh, saturation. So if you have no idea how that happened, I think this video is for you. So I invite all of you guys to uh, stick with me uh, till the end of this uh, video. Now, um, now in uh, this COVID pandemic, we have been using uh, different methods to give uh, high concentration of oxygen because these uh, people depend on high oxygen. They have high oxygen demand. So uh, we'll first uh, look at the basic requirements needed to give a high concentration of oxygen. Now we all know um, when we take a breath, for example, a tidal volume of 500 bits, so the volume is only one parameter. For example, the tidal volume of 500 can be taken uh, like this, you know, the this is the flow rate, this is uh, flow rate, and this is uh, the time. So you can have this uh, tidal volume of 500 at a flow rate of normally, we breathe at a, uh, the our Peak inspiratory flow rate is about 35, 45. We'll say 30 to 45 liters a minute, uh, liters per minute. And then that is our peak inspiratory flow rate. So the, the volume is 500, but the peak flow required is 35 to 45 liters per minute. That is our usual, normal, uh, natural breath. Now in dysnic patient, so this same 500, uh, they might need, um, say, higher flow rate and a shorter time, or sometimes higher flow rate and a longer time with a larger tidal volume. So their requirements might vary. So the peak flow can, uh, in a moderately dyspneic patient, it may be about 50 to 60 liters, but even severe dyspneic, uh, in severe dyspnea, it might even go above 70, 80, even 100, more than 100 liters per minute. So to understand how we can provide oxygen to a uh, person with high concentration, so you need to understand this uh, peak inspiratory flow rate um, and the volume. So unless you provide this peak inspiratory flow rate with oxygen, you cannot have 100% oxygen because at the peak inspiration, if you are breathing at a rate of say 35 liters a minute and you provide only 10 liters, then you cannot provide 100% oxygen with 10 liters because you are not meeting the peak inspiratory flow rate unless you have a collection of oxygen in a separate bag like the reservoir. So generally, so there are two main ways of uh, meeting this uh, target. So we'll look at these two main ways of meeting oxygen uh, target. So one is to achieve the peak inspiratory flow rate. That is what we do with the high flow nasal cannula. We try to achieve the peak inspiratory flow rate of 35 to 45, and we try to uh, give a higher flow rate um, when the patient needs high flow rate, for example, moderate or to severe dyspnea, we increase the flow rate. So flow rate always goes with the patient's flow requirement, nothing to do with the oxygen concentration. So you increase the flow rate. But if you need 100% oxygen, then you need to increase um, the oxygen flow rate up to your peak flow depending on how the patient is breathing. For example, if the patient is breathing normally, maybe you need to provide only 40 liters total flow rate and total the whole uh, flow rate of 40 liters oxygen if you want to give 100% oxygen. If you want to give 50%, maybe a lesser amount. So likewise, so peak flow rate, if you need to give 100% oxygen, you must achieve the peak flow rate with oxygen. So that is the first requirement. So you can use a thing like um, high flow nasal cannula where they try to achieve the peak inspiratory flow rate, but in a very severe dyspnea patient may, may not be successful, but generally for most of the people, high flow can achieve the peak inspiratory flow rate. The other requirement or other method of delivering a high oxygen concentration is to have a reservoir. So once you have a reservoir of oxygen, for example, from a non rebid the max uh, mask, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. So then you can actually breathe from that reservoir, whatever the flow rate you want. 
For example, if you need 100 liters, you can take 100 liters out of it. If you need 50 liters, you can take 50 liters. But the problem is uh, non the mask is not completely sealed most of the time. So you get a bit of, you know, yeah, mixing, but you can get a very high concentration of oxygen. But uh, so these are the two main ways of delivering high oxygen concentration. Either you have to match the peak inspiration flow rate, or you can provide the reservoir so that the patient can breathe from it. Um, now, now this is the nasal prone. So you cannot provide a very high flow rate through the nasal prone because it's, it will dry the uh, uh, nasal mucosa. It's quite uncomfortable. And the tubings are quite small. So practically, you can't apply a high flow rate because uh, the, the pressure within the tube will go up because it's very thin. Tubing. What happens in the nasal prone? Generally, you provide about less than four liters, one, two, three, four liters of oxygen. So how can we provide oxygen with this couple of liters of oxygen uh, flow rate? Now, I told you, you have to either have a reservoir. Here, you can't see a reservoir, obviously. And then um, the flow rate is not compatible with the peak flow rate, which is only about uh, normally 35 to 45. Now, this uh, nasal prone is about a couple of liters. Now, what happens in nasal prone is once you apply nasal prone, so it actually um, push gases into the nasal cavity. Um, when you are not breathing, like you know, breathe out and then you wait in the ne next fraction of a second or a second, you get oxygen uh, getting into the um, nasal cavity so that it, it fills the cavity. So the next breath, you have, you're actually taking this, this is actually functioning as a reservoir, small reservoir, which is not a very uh, large one, maybe I'll say 50 ml, I don't know the exact volume. It will differ from person to person, but generally so that out of your 500 ml, you have 50 ml of enriched air, oxygen enriched air. So that is how your oxygen saturation or the oxygen concentration increases. So nasal prone is a simple device where you can apply uh, oxygen, but it all depends on your nasal cavity. If your nasal cavity is stuffed, there's no point applying a nasal prone. So uh, basically there are various ways of calculating. Generally one liter, you get 24%, uh, so FiO2, is fraction. So if it is 24%, it's 0.24. Now, uh, so likewise, you can get every liter, 24, 28, 32, 36, like every uh, liter, you get four added to the uh, FiO2. So now uh, you can see you, know, you cannot increase more than four because it's quite uncomfortable and the pressures uh, will rise within the tubing and it won't be practical to increase the flow. So uh, nasal prone is used when you need less than 40% oxygen. And it's much uh, comfortable for the patient because it, there is no big, you know, claustrophobic um, face mask and it's a simple device and you need only a very low flow of oxygen. Now face mask on the other hand, or what we call Hudson mask has got a slightly larger reservoir so that you can actually have a, a larger part or portion of the tidal volume filled with oxygen or oxygen enriched, but it's variable performance because it it varies, the FiO2 delivered vary with the uh, input flow. If you are providing say six liters versus uh, 10 liters, so you get a different FiO2. And the mass volume, certain masks are uh, big enough to accommodate, but only thing if you have a big enough, uh, very big uh, mask, the problem is once you exhale, you have some amount of carbon dioxide left in the within the mask so that you might rebreathe the same gases. So you have to have some kind of a minimum flow rate of four to five liters for you to flush the carbon dioxide uh, in the mask. But otherwise, um, the FiO2 change with the input flow of oxygen and the mask volume and how much leakage. Sometimes the mask is on the forehead, then of course you are not getting enough oxygen. And the patient's breathing pattern. If the patient is breathing very fast, like you know, very deep and generating very high flow rates, your oxygen concentration drops. And if they are breathing normally, your oxygen concentration increases. So that is how the COPD patients, once, once you put them on a Hudson mask, when they are dyspneic, they are getting low FiO2. Sorry, yeah, low FiO2. Once they settle down, they might actually go into a um, coma stage because once they slow down, they get higher FiO2 and you lose the hypoxic drive. So that is, those are the kind of basic theories. Uh, so I'm going to, not going to details about these things. So I'll focus basically on uh, high concentration, how to provide high concentration oxygen. So face mask, how much 
FiO2 or how much what concentration can we provide? So generally, it depends on the flow rate you uh, uh, provide, and there are other uh, causes I told you. But these are all rough guides. So if you provide about five to six liters, generally above four. Uh, 40 percent oxygen so these are rough guides as i told you if the mask is somewhere else and if the mask size of the mask the way the patient breathes so this is a variable uh, performance device but you get about 40 percent oxygen with about six liters and you can get about 60 percent about uh, 10 liters so this is the situation about the uh, normal face mask or hudson mask uh, which is a very simple device available in each and every ward so this is one device where if you need of up to 40 to 60 percent so that's the option for so less than 40 percent nasal prones 40 to 60 percent you can use this uh, uh, hudson mask or normal face mask but remember this is a variable performance device a patient might not get these values uh, but they might get that values also so that is a variable performance device now so what is this now so if you need more than 60 percent so we use this non-rebreathing bag mask so here it's quite uh, different compared to other, they, they look like normal face mask with a bag in it, but it's slightly different because oxygen does not directly flow into the patient, it actually goes into the bag. So that bag should be filled when you are breathing because that is where the reservoir is. And then um, the oxygen actually then once the patient breathes, uh, the, the oxygen goes into the patient. So, so that's how patient gets high concentration of oxygen. So you have a reservoir. If the mask is fairly fitted, uh, then you can get high concentration, generally about, about 70%, 70%, 80%, 90%. So if you can put a, I wouldn't recommend you doing this, but if you put a, say, uh, some kind of a tape around the mask, you can get 100% oxygen, but I wouldn't recommend uh, doing that because you, you have certain holes over here for the exhalation and there is a flap valve, uh, uh, it's a transparent most of the time well um, to prevent the patient getting uh, room air entrainment. So when the patient breathes, so this valve closes so that patient can only take gases from the uh, reservoir back so that you can get a very high concentration of oxygen. So this is a very good device to get high concentration of oxygen. So the advantage over here is you don't need to have a very high flow rate like you know, 30, 40, 50 liters of oxygen. You can get some 10 to 15 liters per minute to fill the bag. Once the bag is filled, it doesn't matter whether you are giving 14 liters, 15 liters, because generally, I mean, it can matter very slight, but generally it doesn't matter. Sometimes I have seen in certain people teach that uh, when you give 10 liters, this is the concentration. Now, no, it, you can, you should be able to understand once the bag is filled, you are breathing from the bag. It doesn't generally affect with the amount of oxygen added. If the bag is filled, you can just be happy with it. And some slightly it can increase because the additional oxygen might get into the patient, but it's not going to change a lot. So what you need is to have a filled bag so that when the patient breathes, so patient can generate, uh, the, the, the re achieve the peak inspiratory flow demand. So that if they are breathing at a rate of 40, no problem. You can get 40 liter per minute. If they are breathing at a rate of 100, no issue. You can get 100 liters per minute because it's a reservoir. So it depends on how you breathe and what kind of a seal around the uh, face mask or the non the mask. So that is the non the mask. Uh, the advantage is it's cheap, very cheap, and you can get high concentration, but you might not get 100% because it's, there is some kind of leakage around the mask. Uh, although you are supposed to keep the mask fairly okay, but still there can be a, a leak. Uh, I mean, it's not 100% um, perfect seal. But it's a very good uh, way of getting high concentration of oxygen. <clears throat> now, high flow nasal cannula is a different device. And people are sometimes intimidated by these devices. But it, it's basically what it tries to provide is tries to provide the peak inspiratory flow rate with whatever the oxygen concentration you want. So what they do is they blend uh, you know, oxygen and uh, air and apply to the patient's uh, nasal cavities because it's so drying that so they have a humidifier attached so that whatever the gases and their tubings are slightly larger compared to a uh, not slightly, I mean, um, considerably larger and uh, wider in diameter compared to nasal cannula because you have to provide higher uh, flow rate without increasing uh, very high back pressures. So you provide high flow rate of oxygen through the uh, nasal cavities 
so that you flush all the nasal cavity pharynx and you reduce the dead space in a certain way. And then you provide high concentration of oxygen because you try to meet, you fill the nasal cavities one way. The other thing is you try to meet the peak inspiratory flow demand, peak inspiratory flow rate. So if the patient is breathing at a rate of 35, 45, and you need to give 100% oxygen, you can provide 40, say 40 liters of oxygen total. Only so total flow of 40 liters and the oxygen flow of flow of 40 liters. The same, same, only oxygen. So that you can achieve peak inspiratory flow rate and they will get a practically 100% oxygen. Now, this is basically uh, theoretically and practically important in low uh, flows when the patient is breathing less than 60 liters because high flow is generally 50, 60 liters, older ones 50 liters, the new ones 60 liters. Um, so if the patient is breathing less than 60 liters, of course, the patient can get 100% oxygen if the device is properly applied and you only provide oxygen 60 liters. But it's compared to other devices, it consumes a lot more oxygen. Uh, say Nunri with the mask, for example, if you want to get 70% oxygen, uh, now the high flow nasal cannula, they need about roughly about 40 liters of oxygen, 70% oxygen. So 40 liters of oxygen, but, um, but some people say uh, you can minimize the amount of oxygen wastage by reducing the flow, but that is actually, you are actually killing the purpose of the uh, high flow. And some people, I mean, say they say to reduce the total flow to 40 liters and then adjust the FiO2. So you give a lower amount of um, oxygen, but that, you know, kills the purpose, you know, high flow nasal cannula, the only advantage is you can achieve the peak is the flow rate. So if you don't achieve that one, so you better use some other device. I mean, high flow is not for that one. So, so depending on the patient's flow rate, I mean, how dysnic they are, then you may need to increase the flow rate. So flow rate depends on the patient's effort and uh, they are, they are so we don't know exactly how much they are generating. So you can actually go up on the flow rate and the oxygen until your saturation is met. Uh, so that's the high flow nasal cannula. So it aims to achieve uh, a peak inspiratory flow rate um, with 100% oxygen. And then it can achieve 100% oxygen as long as the patient's peak flow is less than the set oxygen flow. Like if you are setting 40 liters per minute and the patient is breathing some 80 liters per minute, then of course you can't. But most of the people, they try to breathe. Uh, I mean, they generally breathe uh, within 40, 50, 60 uh, in a dyspnea patient, but extreme dyspnea, as I told you, well, this might not work as in the intended. Um, and then, and it has very high oxygen consumption. You have to be this in mind once you, I mean, if you want to plan what you are doing in your COVID center. And it, it says, and they say there is some kind of peep effect, uh, but it's, it's. Uh, I mean, there is a peep effect. So they say every 10 liters, I can't remember, maybe 0 0.75, 0 0.8, uh, so that uh, of uh, peep generated every 10 liters. So once you, you say 50, 60, maybe you get five of peep. That is important, but in a, uh, extremely severe, you know, type of respiratory failure. Most of the time, they, they are having some kind of air hunger. They keep their mouth open, so you cannot generate a significant peep. So this is theoretically important, but practically in severe type of respiratory failure, I don't think it serves, uh, you know, the uh, proper purpose. And it's good for carbon dioxide removal because it flushes the entire, the, the mouth and oral cavity so that your dead space, the anatomical dead space is reduced. So this is they actually practically once you apply high flow nasal cannula, you can get some CO2 removal. I think it's a very good uh, way of removing uh, CO2 while giving oxygen uh, without adding additional uh, dead space into the system. Now, now we'll just analyze the cost analysis of say we have ten persons with we need seventy percent oxygen and they all have some kind of significant dyspnea. So I say it's sixty liters per minute uh, flow rate. Uh, the peak inspiratory flow rate patient, they are uh, dyspneic and they generate 60 liter per minute. That is the patient's flow rate. So we have to match that flow rate if you want to give 100%. But if you want to give um, 70%, so you need, uh, generally you can achieve about 40%, 40 liters per minute, you know, 40, 42, something like that. So we'll say 40 liters per minute per hour is about 2,400 liters per hour. And for the entire day, 
you need 7,600 liters per day. And for 10 patients, you need more than 5 lakh, 576,000 liters per day. So this is per single day for 10 people. Now, if you have, if you, when you do this for one week or five days, it's a very large amount of oxygen. We'll say, we'll stop at one day. So 576,000 liters a day. Now, if you compare the same effect, you know, you can get 70% from a non-rebreathing mask. Uh, now, the, uh, the advantage with high flow is it's a fixed performance. Once you have, uh, so, the, but, so basically until the patient exceeds the uh, high flow, flow capacity, so they have a fairly fixed performance device. Now, under the mask, uh, it can be fixed performance, but we don't call it fixed one because uh, depending on the flow rate uh, and everything, it can change. Uh, generally, it's not, uh, but practically it is. Uh, because uh, once you uh, uh, provide a, um, a good uh, uh, filled bag, then you can actually get a high concentration. I, I can't say it's fixed performance, but it's you can get high concentration. So what you need in COVID is not a fixed performance. You need high concentration of oxygen because they, they need more and more oxygen. So you can do the same thing with uh, basically with 10 liters in theoretically and practically, but I'll say... I'll take 12 liters because some, some might argue that uh, with 10 liters, you can't get 70%, but maybe. But so I'll say 10, 12 liters per minute and you, you give 12 liters uh, for 60, per, and you get 720 liters per hour and total for 10 people, 147, sorry, 172,800. Now compared with these two devices, having the same kind of effect, I'm, I'm not saying exactly the same, Unless the patient needs some kind of positive pressure support, you, you might get a better thing from an NIV device, something like that. But for just the, simply talking about the oxygen requirement, uh, so non with the mask, the difference is with the high flow, it's more than four, like 403,000 liters. And so you are wasting this amount of oxygen per day. And then if you multiply this, if you have more people and if you have you know, so you, you might actually waste a lot of oxygen for the same effect um, if you use high flow nasal cannula. And there are advantages of using high flow, but I'm just saying, just looking at the oxygen cost, we are wasting a lot of oxygen using high flow, but you can get the same effect. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the FiO2. So you can get the same FiO2 with a cheaper device with a lower flow because the non with the mask use the reservoir method. That is the most effective method. Now, achieving the peak flow. So while you are breathing in, you give 42 liters, 40 liters. While you breathe out, you waste 42 liters. And your inspiration to expiration is about one to two ratio. So two thirds of the time, you are wasting 40 liters. That is what you are doing. But here, two thirds of the time, you are wasting 10 liters. So it's um, so you, you should understand the, the logic behind high flow and the non the mask. Uh, but it's it's important. I mean, you it's not a bad device, high flow nasal cannula. It's just a tool, you know. It's it's just a tool to provide 100 percent oxygen in a non-invasive manner. So it has its own uses and indications. Like you know, um, there you don't need a, so a high flow nasal cannula. You don't need a lot of expertise. Like uh, if you take non-invasive, you need to have some kind of experience, and you need to set up the you know mask properly on the patient, and there can be malposition. But here with the high flow nasal cannula, you can avoid all these problems, you know, you just attach it. Uh, and most of the time um, it will do the job and it can actually provide 100% oxygen in an uninvasive manner, as long as the patient is not generating a flow rate more than the high flow nasal cannula device can generate. And you are giving that amount of oxygen. And then uh, it's quite effective in providing high concentration oxygen in a fixed performance manner, even with the, the PIFR is moderate to high, but in severe dyspnea, uh, so that is the issue. If, if you have a uh, um, very high uh, oxygen, the patient is asking for very high flow rate, then high flow might fail in that instance. So the thing is, it's the issue side, it, uh, it, it has very high oxygen consumption. So may not be the most ideal device when the oxygen is in high demand. So you probably have to stick to another device and it cannot perform as intended intended uh, when the patient is generating very high. For example, some people actually generate about 80 liters of total flow. So when you give 60 liters, 
Okay, you can't give hundred percent. So when they generate more than hundred liters chloride, then you cannot achieve a good performance with the high flow nasal cannula. So you have to look at the patient. If the patient is generating very high flow rate, I'm not saving uh, just to be happy with some other method, but I'm just saying you have to look at the patient. You have to sort out why the patient is generating high, such a high flow rate. Are they generating very high tidal volume? So that's just providing oxygen will not uh, you know, help the patient. But if you just concentrate on oxygen provision, then uh, high flow, um, there are better devices. I mean, not the better device. You can actually try the um, non rebreathing mask device in this instance. Uh, now, Venturi mask is a totally different device where the Venturi mask, what happens, we actually use this Venturi mask when you need a fixed performance of oxygen um, supply, I mean, de delivery to the patient. For example, uh, what we actually do here is if we use the Venturi principle where a gas is passed through a, a narrow, narrow, sorry, um, narrow, sudden narrowing, so that when the gas so it, it accelerates and then there is a pressure drop and you get entrainment of air. So here you have a narrow opening and then the gas entrains or the room air entrains, diluting the amount of oxygen we are giving. So depending on the size of the hole and the flow rate, you can get certain entrainment ratios. If you don't understand that, term, I'll just say, so if you need 24% oxygen, so you have a certain size of the hole and you apply three liters of oxygen so that it entrains one to 25. And you get a total flow. Although you apply a four, three liter oxygen, you get a total flow of 24%, 79 liters per minute. So that you can, the, you, it covers your peak inspiratory flow rate, flow demand, so that you get a fixed performance, even though the patient is breathing 30 liters, 40 liters, up to 80 liters, so you get 24% oxygen. So that is called fixed performance device. So Venturi mask is not a device where you need um, more oxygen. So this is not the device. You can apply, for example, you can uh, you have 60% Venturi devices, but you need a higher flow rate of oxygen to achieve that one. So it's okay to use 60% uh, Venturi mask when you need 60%, but you have to make sure that you need a fixed performance. If you need more oxygen, with 15 liters, you can get more than 60% if you use non the mask. So Venturi mask, so you can, there's one way of, you know, you can actually lose some of the oxygen, you can waste some of the oxygen because you can get higher effect with 50 liters uh, oxygen with a non the mask. So, so when it actually, when you increase the FiO2, so you can see the entrainment ratio is less and you need to provide the higher oxygen and uh, you don't get the total flow rate uh, as so it might not be as a fixed performance as fixed as a normal uh, i mean we we expect it to be so venturi mask is a fixed performance device especially at lower oxygen concentrations and then with when you go higher and higher it doesn't that is why you don't have anything above 60 percent because you can't generate that uh, flow rate with the normal mask and it's not that effective uh, so that is why we have uh, venturi like that and then, um, okay. So how should you decide what device to use? And depends on uh, what your aim is. You know, if you just need to um, increase the oxygen concentration, then you can keep on, you have certain devices just for oxygen concentration. And if you need oxygen and you need to prevent atelectasis, you need to improve the functional lesser capacity, you might need a say something which can provide some pressure to the lung. So I'm not going to details about those things, but that, so you, it depends on what your aim is. There are so many other reasons uh, to decide. And the, one of the important thing is look at the patient's peak flow. You can't, you can measure actually, but you don't have to measure. We can look at the patient's um, breathing pattern. If they are breathing, we can get a deep, fast breathing, they generate very high peak flow. So can we meet that peak flow with our device? So that is one thing you have to think of. Um, and then look at the patient breathing pattern, as I told you, look at the peak flow. And then uh, what concentration of oxygen do you want to give? So you might, if you need very low concentration, you can just try a um, nasal cannula. 
or low uh, concentration of uh, venturi device. Uh, if you need high concentration, then you can go for devices which can provide high concentration. And how cost effective is the existing oxygen stores in the Pacific? It is very important nowadays, uh, but after the COVID, probably not that important because you may not be giving a lot of patients with high concentration of oxygen. But now, of course, we need to provide uh, high concentration of oxygen. So this, you may have to remember this thing because uh, COVID is still not over and you need to uh, preserve the oxygen uh, in the facility. So um, wherever indicated, you can use the high flow nasal cannula. I'm not saying not to use it, but remember if you only need the oxygen concentration and there are other devices where you can use with a cheaper way and they are not that expensive to purchase and not that expensive to manage. Now, the location and expertise and experience is important. Uh, now, if you are in a facility where you have NID devices and you know how to use, then you can get, you can decide that might uh, affect your decision making. And intubation, of course, uh, depending on the location and expertise, you might get different uh, outcomes after intubation. So, I'm not talking about a guideline here. I'm just talking about um, how to decide what device to use to provide oxygen. Um, and then you have to use your uh, local guideline and then your um, common sense sometimes, you know, uh, in when uh, providing oxygen in your environment where if you cannot stick to the guideline because you don't have certain stuff, then you can use this knowledge um, to uh, select your uh, device. Now, whether to use uh, a Venturi mask or a face mask. Now, I, I told you, um, so Venturi mask, to get 60%, you need 15 liters. So this one, only 10 liters. But the advantage of the Venturi mask is a fixed performance device. Uh, this one is not fixed. So whether you need a fixed concentration or you need a high, you can provide 15 liters. I mean, it's not really recommended, but you can provide 15 liters per minute with a non-rebreather mask oxygen. Um, so that actually you will get much higher oxygen. So you, you can get much higher oxygen effect with 15 liters if you just avoid using a uh, Venturi mask and use the same flow with the non the mask, then you get more oxygen, uh, oxygen uh, concentration. And then uh, you might get the same effect with the 10 liters per minute through a face mask. Mm -hmm. But if the patient uh, is um, not um, responding, then you can up the this thing, but generally, so it's not a bad thing to use now Venturi mask, but you must remember the underlying principle. So you need higher oxygen uh, in the Venturi to get the same effect, but the advantage is fixed performance. So this is generally a device where you need to step down from oxygen. You can select the exact amount of FiO2 you want to provide. The other masks are not, not uh, uh, fixed performance. So you can select these Venturi devices, basically mainly in the, when you de-escalate oxygen, when you want to give a particular oxygen cancer, when you need to escalate oxygen, there are better options to give more oxygen using lower amount of oxygen, or higher concentration with lower amount of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Now, um, high flow versus non rebreather So high flow is a very good device if you, uh, to provide high concentration of oxygen, but as I told you, it, it is very expensive on the oxygen usage. non rebreather mask is not, um, normally as efficient when the patient's, uh, when the patient's uh, total flow rate is um, less than 60 liters, high flow is better at providing oxygen concentration, but it cannot, uh, but it's expensive oxygen. You use a lot of oxygen and the device is expensive. Now this one is cheap, very, you know, it's very cheap device and uh, achieve this if you need say 60, 70% or 70% oxygen. So probably I would choose Andre with the mask first, uh, if because it, it provides a high concentration of oxygen. So you can get the job done with, uh, but if you need to wash out carbon dioxide and you need to get some uh, positive pressure effect, you can actually use the, uh, uh, this thing as long as the patient keeps their mouth shut uh, and it's working like that and you have enough oxygen. So it's not a bad device. It's a good tool, but the only thing it's, it uh, uses a lot of oxygen and it's expensive to purchase and expensive to uh, manage with regard to oxygen cost. And then uh, now the problem is if the patient is generating a hundred liters of 
flow demand. Now, this non, non sorry, high flow device can provide only up to 60 liters of oxygen. So 40 liters the patient has to take from outside so that uh, you might not get the expected result. Whereas if you use the non the mask, so for 100 liters, you can try to actually, because it's a collected, you know, reservoir bag. So you might get, if you have a, a good uh, seal, I mean, sufficient enough seal, you can achieve a better oxygen concentration compared to high flow in a very dysnic patient. So it's not, it's not always, you know, um, working like that because sometimes if the patient is having a bad lung, so you even the both these things will not work properly. But just just uh, thinking of the um, oxygen concentration, so the non with the mask is uh, is slightly uh, better at uh, very high patient's flow rate because the uh, high flow can provide only up to six liters. But anything less than six liters, patient is generating anything less than six liters. High flow is a very effective device um, at giving hundred percent oxygen, where this may not. Uh, give 100% oxygen, but at very high patient flow rate, this may be an option. So you try that one mm -hmm. before you escalate to anything else. If you don't have NIV facilities, I would recommend uh, some other thing, but if you don't have NIV intubation facilities and how to manage things like that. So this may be an option. So this is not a guideline I'm talking about. I'm talking about some kind of options you can use to uh, provide uh, using the non-rebreather uh, mask. 